welcome to Exotic Garden UK, your Arch Chris Weekly. And this week we're having a look around the gardens of RHS Wisley. So we're here in the exotic garden, which has only been established a few years at Wisley here. It used to be the old rose garden. I'm going to have a look around this area and see what exotic plants we can find. Maybe not the most exotic plant at first glance, but I think actually this Pinus, Sheffield Park, with its very long needles, does add an exotic look to the garden and it's hardy and that's why I think they've chose to put it in this garden. There's many specimens dotted about and we've got some real tropical, tropical looking plants around it. So we've got a nice euphorbia here, eucalyptus, and we'll squeeze past the lilies and the day lilies here and we've got all the cannas. Unfortunately a lot of these do look like the virus but there's some that look really really good as well. We've got a stripped bark on this Trachycarpus fortunii, so this has been done manually rather than naturally, so not to everybody's taste, but it does look quite unusual. And then here we've got a full grove of Musa Baju, including a flowering one up here with some fruits forming, and Musa Baju play a, a big feature to this part of the garden. So it's all around it we've got a, a beech hedge to offer protection, and then we've got all the Musa Bajus there's absolutely dozens and dozens of plants. We've got these here, and if we come around here, you can see absolutely loads more as well. We've got a Selenium beticum here as well. So this has like uh, tomato-like fruits on it. And more Musa bajus. These are some of the virus cannas. You can see the leaves have got their discoloration on and the different markings on. This isn't variegation, this is actually the virus here. And as we look down here also, we've got loads of these pups of Trachycarpus, sorry, loads of these pups of Tetrapanax. And we'll see if we can find the mother plants further in the garden. We've got a very nice specimen here of a Chemerops Volcano, the silver underside of the leaves. Really nice specimen there. And this is something you don't see every day. We've got the Brutia Yete, so this is not one I grow. Uh, it's very slow growing, but it likes the summer heat, so it's doing well down here in Wisley. This is a nice specimen here, but we'll see a much bigger specimen further around in the garden as well. Got some nice magnolias with its tropical, although deciduous leaves here. And some more Pinus, it's Pinus patula. Again, long drooping needles on this. Got a nice waggy palm on this side. It's just flat finished flowering. And then we've got some more Bootias. So this is Bootia capitata vera odorata. I just call it odorata. Beautiful specimen here. It's one I grow in my garden. There's quite a few here at Wisley including this much bigger specimen over here. Beautiful palm, really tropical looking. Common names of jelly palm because of the fruits can be made into a nice sweet jelly. Over here we've got a nice loquat tree and a very tall growing Trachycarpus palm. This is Trachycarpus nova, very fast growing. Slender trunk as well on that one. And then we've got some more ferns, and I think we'll come out and we'll actually find the mother plant of that Tetrapanax. So over here, this is a, probably about three, three and a half metres tall, is a big Tetrapanax papyrifera. Um, plenty of ferns in this area as well. And also more pups of Tetrapanax here, and a grove of Trachycarpus wagneranus, or the waggy palms on this side. Now, let's go and see something rather special although it's hidden away in a corner. Actually, I've just spotted this. This is a, another magnolia. This is Magnolia biloba. Very interesting leaves on this. Really like the exotic look of those, but again, deciduous, deciduous plants, but hardy. 
Now let's look at that really exciting rare plant that everybody wants once they've seen it. It's hidden away, it's in the corner. And there we are, if we just zoom in, we can find a very hardy plant, a very sought after plant, that's Trachycarpus fortunii variegata. So we've got the cream variegation, yellow variegation leaves. And that does really well in semi-shade. If it's in too much sun, it bleaches and burns out the variegated parts. And in too much shade, it just stays green. Here we have a Xantodesia hercules with the spot of leaves and much bigger flowers than the regular calla lily. More Fortunae here. Some nice ground cover, they use some hardy plants. So we've got this hardy begonia down here with the red underside. It's one that I grow as well in the garden. And they've also got the Brunner Drac Frost as well. Very hardy, but adds that exotic look to the garden, but can be left out all year round. Here, I think we've got a fig, but with the snowflake-like leaves. So another hardy plant for that exotic feel to the garden. And here's something that isn't hardy for me, you've got a Washingtonia Robusta, and this looks a like good height, so this is a good, sort of nearly two metres of trunk. Um, not hardy for me, but it's doing okay down here in Wisley. And just over here, finally, got a nice Briar Amata, with some bigger ones in the garden as well, which we'll get to later. Some nice blue leaves on that. And finally, we've got the Shefflers behind you, Rhododendrifolias. Again, I grow this in my garden, and these are looking pretty good. Several on this side here. Beautiful ferns. Look at this one here, very exotic looking fern here. And this one is Teres umbrosa. So that's one that I'm going to look out for. It's not one I grow, but it looks really interesting and exotic. So I'll be looking out for that one. And then we've got this Volcano. They've really trimmed it back quite a lot here. So I think it's probably because it's had spotting on the leaves, but it's exposed that trunk, good metre of trunk there. Very, very stiff leaves as well. So that's my tour of the exotic garden here at Wisley. Let's carry on around the gardens. So here we've got an absolutely amazing area of tree ferns, Ixodia Antarctica. They're shaded by the birch trees uh, above and an oak tree as well. And we've got multiple specimens. Some of them easily have a good eight foot of trunk like these to my left and the ones in the far distance. So we're going to have a wander around this area and I think we get to some nice gunners as well. Well, look who I bumped into down in the woods at Wisley. It was George from George's Jungle Garden. We were both here because we were invited to the European Palm Forum meetup and we had a few hours to make some videos. So obviously, after you watch this video, you should check out George's video as well for his take on the gardens at Wisley. And many people have asked if we'll do a collab collaboration video in the future. So watch this space, you'll never know what might happen. Right, on with the video. Here we have a fantastic Trachycarpus fortunii. Obviously it's been established for many years in this area and it's got leaves pretty much all the way down to the ground, all the way to the top, so it must have enough moisture to keep all its leaves as well. And it's surrounded by this Euphorbia morifera that's just finished flowering. And I've just spotted some more palm trees down this path, so let's take a look. Masses of Euphorbias down here, so it is a proper, proper jungle. But I think we can get through to some nice yuccas and palm trees down here. Yeah, we've got loads of briar amatas. So here, spiky plants, we've got some nice briar amatas, which like this south facing slope. Several here, and actually look, look at this spiky bromeliad, well, puya. So this is a, a plant that's basically spiky all the way down and it can actually catch animals in it. So uh, rodents, birds can land on it and then they can't get themselves out of the spikes and decompose, die and decompose and actually feed the plant. So it's a bit of a semi-carnivorous plant. It's not truly hardy everywhere, but it's doing well in this spot in Wisley, which will obviously benefit from the summer heat. And we can actually see this one's flowered. So it looks a bit dead now, but that's a flower spike on another puya. And further down, we have a much bigger Brea Amata. And then if we look round here, we've got this stepped area and it has excellent drainage. So we've got loads of agaves. So here we've got 
beautiful agave Weber eye, which will get much, much bigger than this. Beautiful Glauca sleeves without any spikes or anything on it, apart from obviously the big tips at the end. And then we've got various other arid plants. So we've got loads of yuccas. We've got Beshenaria over there as well. And we've got a very nice bed here of aloe striatula that's flowering. So the yellow orangey flowers on here and that's a huge mass and that is very hardy that I have in my garden as well. And then if we just go around here, we've got Medio Picta just in the background there, just around the corner, we've got the variegated Americana, we've got Dissolarion, Acrotrichum up there, the big serrated edges on the leaves. Look at all that mass here of this Echeveria, I think it's Echeveria secunda on there, absolutely loads of it, obviously it's hardy in this location and then the yucca ristrata in the background. And if we just pan across, we can't see all the names, we've got various other yuccas as well. So a wonderful exotic planting in this area. And finally, before we finish this little part of the video, I'll just show you, we've got another Beshenary here that's just about finished flowering. Really wonderful red pinkish flowers when they're in full bloom. Some greenish bits as well. Uh, and when it's finished flowering, that rosette will die. But as you can see, there's loads of other rosettes to follow in this area. I'll show you a much bigger specimen of Butia Yete. And here it is. Very old specimen here. You can see the trunk is already a good two and a half, three meters tall before the foliage at the top. The foliage isn't in massively great condition. We've got quite a lot of spotting and dying off there but we have got some good growth at the top as well. And I expect the, those leaves will actually get bigger with more establishment um, and when it gets its roots in. So I'm guessing this plant has not been here for too many years. It's probably been here in the last 10 years as a quite a big transplant rather than grown from a young plant. So it does take a long time to establish large plants being transplanted. Hence the lack of a great big head of foliage on this one. But it's on a sunny bank, so it gets really good sun. It's sheltered from all sides as well. And it's a fantastic palm if you can find it. So at Wisley, one of the star locations is the glass house. It's been here since 2007. So we're gonna have a look around the glass house and see how many exotic plants we can find. Now here we've got a Cycas Revoluta. And this is quite unusual because it's actually flowering or coning. So you can see that yellow cone in the center and you either get a male or female and then you'll get the actual seeds forming after this so it's not often you see that flowering so it's an unusual plant to see and this one's in Wisley in the UK. Here in the glass house now we've got lots and lots of amazing tree ferns so let's have a closer look at some of the amazing specimens.
thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Ghana UK. Join me next week where we're doing more in the garden. <laughs>